Hi guys, Kaz here again, talking about the Luggy Scooter. You may have seen the other video I did about, about 10 years about me using the Luggy Scooter and what I've experienced in those 10 years. While I was doing that, I thought about some hints and tips I'd picked up along the way and I didn't really get a chance to put them in the other video. So I thought I'll do a... I think I've got to about 20 hint, hints and tips, which uh, some of them might not even be hints and tips, but I thought... <clears throat> I'll mention them anyway rather than not mentioning them. So hopefully you'll get some value out of them, you find them useful and then you can use them yourselves for when you're using the scooter. Okay, the first thing I would always mention is the adjustable seat. So this seat adjusts into two ways. So you can, there's a little red lever there, you press that, it, it goes down, and it goes up as well. well what is that a hint and tip? It's, a, it's an obvious thing, but it's also a non-obvious thing. So that lever that I've just shown you, that's the one that you use to make the scooter st uh, seat go all the way to the bottom. So when, you, when you're when you closing it up or you're folding it. <clears throat> However, there's two levels of height. And the reason that's important is, for example, if you go into a restaurant and you know the seat heights at a certain level, then you make sure, what I do is I put it at the lower one. So if I'm going to, say for example, Nando's or another restaurant, have it at the lower level because it's easy to transfer over. Otherwise, it's giving you a bit of a leap. It's only a few inches, but it can make a difference. So that's one of the things I wanted to mention, the seat height, how it can change. And if you're someone who likes to stand up from the scooter or if you're using, for example, the disabled toilets and you want to be up slightly higher up, then have it at the higher level and... Um, <clears throat> And that can make it easier for you. So if you're trying to go from, from a sitting down position, if you're sat higher up, it'll be easier to go to a standing position or an upright position. And if you're using it to transfer, it might be better from a lower. So that's one thing I noticed. So the seat height is adjustable. So I thought that was a handy tip. Um, I suppose this is kind of obvious, but always use two two handles on the steering wheel. Sometimes you get tempted this day and age to message or call, I suppose. I'm not even sure if there is a rule about ring, uh, uh, using the scooter and using your phone at the same time, but you always have two handles on it because you don't know what's going to be on the pavement. Even if you're not on the pavement, if you're in Tesco, there could be a grape or some sort of tic tac or something that's just enough to put you off your balance if you're just using, if you're going with the trendy look and just using one hand on the steering wheel. But yeah, always have two handles because I've, I've, had, a, I've had a few near misses where I've kind of just been in the old world driving down the pavement and then. The pavement's ever so slightly, a couple of millimetres here and there, and it's just enough to kind of uh, put you off a little bit and make you look a bit uncool. So, uh, yeah, that's very useful. So, that's what I would say is, sounds obvious, but always put two hands on the steering wheel. Um, speaking of stability, the other thing I would mention, another tip I would give is uh, use the 50p rule when, um, use, when you're getting towards a curb or a small lip. And what I mean by the 50p rule is, um, like in the UK, we have these 50, the 50p coin. It's about probably about two or three centimeters, uh, probably about two and a half centimeters wide. So, what you do is um, imagine a curve. If it's more than two and a half centimeters, don't approach it because sometimes, like, I'm not sure you meant to use the luggy like this, but like if there's a small lip or a small curve, I always kind of just take a bit of a run up and just go both hands on the steering wheel and take a bit of a run up and just go for it. Um, sometimes, sometimes you go into some shops or somebody's house and there's a little bit of a small threshold. You can get over that with uh, the, 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 like, with, like say with the 50p rule, but, but I would mention, always make sure you hit it head on. Don't hit curbs or anything like that at an angle. I mean, if I mean, even if you're riding a bike, you wouldn't do that. But sometimes, because if you're a bit busy or people are in the way, you might go, don't do it at the angle because you're only going to give, give reason for you to tip. Uh, but just make sure you hit it straight on and like I say, use the 50p rule. That's not official advice. It's just something I've learned along the way and hopefully it gives you a bit of a guide. Once you get some more than the 50p, then you're going to kind of hit straight on and just come to a bit of an abrupt standstill. So yeah, something to bear in mind. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things I've noticed uh, is, well, one of the things you may, you will know about, but you probably forget about, is this little speedometer. It's like a little volume control you might get on a stereo system, but this little speedometer, so if you turn it down and you go full blast, if you like, you're not going to go very fast. The, the quick, the more, I mean, if you put it onto full speed, it takes you to the full speed of the lugger. 
The reason why it's such a useful invention or a useful addition or and then a useful tip is because if you're in a, like in a small confined area like in a busy supermarket or you're somewhere where you don't really want to be going too fast even by accident just turn it down a little bit but then again if you're on the pavement and you're in a rush to get everywhere just make sure you're on maximum and obviously take all the precautions you normally would but I know it's there and you can see it but sometimes you forget about it so it's quite subtly done so while you're driving or while you're on your scooter just turn it down and turn it off and it's quite useful especially because sometimes you press the accelerator and you're not going fast but you could be going fast because if you're in like for example more like the traffic center or somewhere like that and you don't you don't be going too quick and clipping people's heels so yeah this is a um, i don't know what the official term for it is but it's like a like the like a the volume button for the speed well, the speed well, let's call it the speed control for the sake of this video um other things i would mention that would another tip i would give is yeah another tip i would give is the in-car charger i use an in-car charger and i find it very 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 useful it's nothing fancy nothing complicated like whenever i take my scooter the in-car charger is already plugged in um it's very 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 straightforward you have it's just a lead one side of the lead is a plug socket where this plug socket would go into and the other side of the lead is only about a meter long goes into the back of your uh, armrest if you like that's in the middle i think a lot of newer cars have these where you, t you there's like a little um a little uh, not quite a draw but like a little uh, lid or something something there that you just take off you plug it in it's like a two pin plug on one side and on the other side there's like a three pin plug that you put this into and you plug it into your car plug this plug, plug your luggage charger in and whenever you start the car whenever you're driving your scooter's charging at the same time very very useful because it means that one, it, saves, it saves time your, because you can charge your scooter while you're driving and the second thing it does is that it means that you don't run out of charge and it's just useful to stay in charge and uh, they cost about five or six quid it's very very cheap and it's very very useful so definitely definitely have that uh, next thing i would say is if you're going on a long, long journey or you're going somewhere far say for example if you're visiting a stately home or you're going in the park or you're going to a coffee shop that's quite far away take this charger with you I always just put it in my little man bag or something or put it in a carry bag or anything but it's always worth taking but if you're not sure can you or can you not just take it with you because you can use it because you've seen what it's like it's only like a laptop charger so you go wherever you go and stop for a coffee plug your charger in and sit there and have your coffee and it's quite acceptable these days because of the technology we have available lots of super, you know, lots of um, restaurants and coffee shops have these uh, chargers I mean, uh, like a plug socket point. And even if you can't see one and you're getting really desperate, just ask. I remember recently I was in Birmingham and I was running out of charge and there was this like little coffee shop in the middle of this precinct and it was so small. And I just said, listen, I'm desperate. I need me charge. I've got me charge. I can I think? And she said, yeah, there's a plug socket there. And she sorted me out and it was really useful, but it pays to have that with you. I mean, I don't always have it with me. It's just when you go into somewhere new or somewhere that you don't recognise. And like I say, it's not very big, so you can always put it in like in your man bag or in your purse or maybe in a carry bag or something, but very useful and very, um, I can say, can save you in a very embarrassing situation. The last thing you want to be doing is running out of charge and having someone push you down the road, which like I'm, uh, if it happens it's not a big deal don't worry about it but I suppose it's a situation you would rather avoid <clears throat> um, the other thing I would say is um, when you come to a standstill on the scooter always switch it off so for example you can see here your scooter is all with the, with the red lights on your scooters on so then you can go obviously backwards and forwards don't really want to do it right now because I'm in a confined space let's say for example you're at the tills in Tesco you're about to pay always switch this off so as soon as you stop switching off i mean sometimes i forget and then by accident you put a carrier back there and you can shoot forward or if someone just happens to brush past you and they hit the scooter then they can shoot forward or backwards so it's a it's it's a dead easy thing to do but just on and off so almost put it into your system as soon as you stop switching off because it takes like say so you don't take it doesn't take a second so it's just on off on off so it's very easy to do so it's not gonna cause you any major 
inconvenience or anything, but very useful because especially if there's kids knocking about or people brushing past, the last thing you want to do is give yourself an embarrassing situation. So yeah, but another tip there is always switch your scooter off when you're at a standstill. Another thing I noticed about the luggy, and obviously it's been made in that way, but is there's lots of parts to the luggy that you can use to your advantage. Like I think I've done videos for years ago about lifting the luggy into the car and I talk about how you can use like different parts, like this back of this, you can almost lift it. So if you're stood upright leaning against the car, you can lift this up. Um, the back, there's another handle you can lift up. At the front, you can see, I mean, I'm lifting the whole scooter there just from the left hand and I'm not really putting much effort into it. So you can imagine like you can lift that and someone could pull it along. So you don't always have to collapse or close the scooter to use it the way it should do. And there's, like I said, quite a few features that you can put this down, kind of like I said, if you want to put a hand getting up, you can always pull yourself up. I'm not saying these are the official ways to do it, but when you use something, you get to use, learn different things about it. And the really good things are, like I say, the back of the seat is really useful. The back of the scooter, where you've got the actual bar that can be used for lifting. And obviously this front that I've just demonstrated to you, which is really good. And um, I don't know if that's the purpose of it, but I'm sure when they were designing it, they must have taken it into consideration. And it's something I find very useful. Um, another thing I would talk about is, and once again, this is obvious, but it's useful, uh, is the adjustable steering height. So for example, you close it. So that's how it's closed, isn't it? Or the lowest level. Um, I also use the lowest level sometimes. So for example, if I'm using the example of the restaurant, I've just pulled up. I usually try to get a table of four, even if there's just two of us, or they're useful to have more tables. So, um, so I, I, I transfer onto the scooter, I mean, I transfer onto the normal chair, and then I would use this scooter and just push under the table because you can lower it down and you can push most of the scooter under the table. Um, if that's not possible, get them to put it in the con, take the handbrake off, and time to to wheel it into the corner of the restaurant, depending on how big the restaurant is and where you are going. Anyway, getting back to the point about the about this feature, so you can open it and adjust the steering, but you've also you've also got two here, so you don't necessarily have to just use one. You can do you use both and have the steering wheel really high. I mean, it depends. I mean, you might think when are you ever going to use that, but. If you're waiting in a queue somewhere or something, it's just easier to have a higher steering wheel or sometimes it's easier to have a lower one or somewhere in between. So it's, I'd say, very useful. Uh, I'd say maybe not quite a tip, but uh, something you, some useful information to know because sometimes you just forget there are two adjustable uh, uh, steering heights. So you could use uh, either one or either, use one or both. It's yeah, very, very useful. <clears throat> um, moving on to another feature or another tip, if you like, is the handbrake facilitator. So over here, you'll see there's a, a red lever. I think it's something that everyone knows about. It's basically the handbrake. So you, when this is on, you can't. When you switch the scooter on, you can see the red lights flashing because it's not meant to be used that way. So that's like a telltale sign that something's not right. Uh, so you can't even, even if you do it, you can't move forward. So it's quite a nice, uh, uh, I suppose, safety feature. So when the handbrake's on, you can push it forward, backwards. And this is what I was talking about. So say, for example, you're in the restaurant, you've sat on your chair and you just want to move it forward. You can just do it that way because you could, I suppose, switch it on and move it ever so slightly with your controls, but you're taking a bit of a risk there. But yeah, the handbrake facility is really good because it allows people to move the scooter away somewhere or push it into the corner or if someone's getting out of the back of the car or something then you could <coughs> if you're putting it in the back of the car you can also make sure that the scooter is easy to pull and it's in free wheels if you like so yeah a very very important feature not something that I find very useful um, so yeah so that's like a handbrake system but the other thing to make sure is, is if someone's helping you with the handbrake or if someone's, or if you're using a handbrake, make sure you switch it back on so it's on lock. So like that, I'm going to transfer off this couch onto here. You need to make sure it's on lock. The last thing you want to do is leave it off and then fly off. So it's like with anything, like I said, if you're driving a car, you'd handbrake, take the keys out and all that kind of stuff. 
And same with the scooter. If you're going to use a scooter, make sure you switch to an RR, steering high, handbrake, and it's just, I suppose, a bit of a, a bit of a, uh, this uh, it's just a bit of a useful safety feature and something to bear in mind when you're using the scooter. Okay, one of the things that you need to bear in mind is battery. You, I mean, the lug is great. I mean, you can, I think, travel eight miles or something like on a smooth surface with the scooter and the features I've mentioned about the charging and how you can charge. That's all great. But one of the things that you need to bear in mind is when to know when your battery is going to run out. So what I do is basically this, there's a charging information there. So it's got like a, there's three sectors, a red sector, a green sector and a dark green sector. So of course, I mean, one extreme of the dark green sector. So, you know, that's on full charge. Um, when the needle's right in the middle, don't see that as a half charge. That's almost like a quarter charge left. So that red area, what I've noticed, as soon as it gets to the red area, you're pretty much out of charge. So don't don't think you can use the whole of the red area to use the charge. And that's from my experience. You probably can do, but don't take the risk. So what I would suggest is, I mean, you're using your scooter, make sure that it is in that second green area. If it's in that second green area, and then you can, uh, then it's worth, then, then the charge is on, or then they feel comfortably charged. Um, in terms of running out, the scooter will tell you a sign. So this red light here, when you're driving along, it'll just start flashing. And then what will also happen is it might just cut out. It'll flash a few times and then just cut out. That means it's ready to go off charge. So you need to get back to your car or get back to somewhere you can charge the scooter ASAP. When I say ASAP, I'm talking like maybe like a hundred yards of charge left. And then you've got very low charge. The, we, the, the key to making sure you make most of that charge is by making sure that the charge that you've got, you use very slowly. So don't go fast and hope to get there quicker. You go slowly and go as slow as possible. And when you're going as slow as possible, then that will allow you to go further. So the, the, the scooter takes up most of its charge when you start and stop. So it takes more energy to get going again. So if, you, if you're running out of battery, go as slow as possible for as long as possible. Obviously, you want to avoid getting in that, into that situation at all. But at the end of the day, we're human and things happen. So if you do get into that situation and it starts flashing at you, you know that charging is about to end imminently. And just make sure you turn it down as far go as slow as possible and stretch it out as far as you can and get to somewhere that you can uh, be in a position where either you can recharge your scooter or you can maybe call someone to bring your charger for you. Okay, extras. There are extras you can get for your scooter. I mean, I've never personally purchased one. Some people are like, when I first bought my scooter, I was really concerned about the battery. And I said to um, Paul, I said, I said, the guy, this is the guy from Luggy Scooter in the, in League in Greece, Manchester. Anyway, I said to him, I'm going to buy the scooter. Well, I was a bit cautious and I said, can I have an extra battery? He says, do you not, why do you need an extra battery for it? I was, no, no, just in case. And he, he says, well, if you need one, let me know. And I've never needed one, so it's been quite useful to, uh, it's been quite useful to use. But one thing I would mention is you can get extra. So I think there are armrests you can use. Um, there's a, I think there's a bag you can put on the back and stuff. Well, I mean, I've never used them, but there are extras available. So if you look at the luggage and think, oh, actually, I prefer one with armrests, you can get one with armrests. Um, a friend of mine actually has his with armrests, and um, they, they seem to work really well for him. He seems to have them on all the time. But once again, that's very much down to you. So when you see the luggage, there are extras you can get, I suppose, like in a car or anything. But um, I've never really preferred it. I've never really bought one myself. The only thing I buy is that. Uh, charge it, the in-car charging lead. But uh, apart from that, no, I don't use any extras, but there are, there are there is a, in terms of a tip, there are available, so if you do want one, you can get in touch with the guys. Um, for me, this look scooter is great in restaurants. When I go to a restaurant, I want to enjoy the whole day, enjoy the atmosphere with the family or her friends or whoever you might be, but you want to enjoy it. So one of the things I like to do is transfer onto their seat. Um, so make sure you see to the right adjustable height and then just transfer over. And it's so easy to do with the scooter. You just kind of slide over onto the seat. So it's really good. You can keep, as I mentioned before, you can keep the scooter next to you or alternatively, if it's a, a fancy restaurant or there's not much space, you can just get 
uh, one of the waiting staff or the person you've been to just take the handbrake off and wheel it into the corner somewhere. And I've done that many times. Once again, depending on the restaurant, depends how, on how big it is, and you can use that to the best of your advantage. So yeah, it's great for restaurants. That's just a handy tip. Uh, does it work on grass uh, is another tip. Uh, yes, you can use it on grass. So if you're in the garden with a family or something, you can use it, you can use a scooter on grass, but not on a wet grass. If it's really wet grass, you're just gonna end up to, um, wheel spin so you, and then you're gonna need someone to give you a bit of a push to get you going and stuff so uh, i think i think that's a bit of a common sense thing but i mean i'm not sure if the uh, the manufacturers officially endorse you going on grass but i mean sometimes you just need to don't you like you're out in the park or something like that yes you can go on grass obviously as always two hands on the steering wheel obviously grass is a bit uneven and you can't tell how big i mean where the divots are or whatever so you always keep two hands on it but make sure it's a dry day. I have personally got away with it being a bit wet, but it's not the sort of chance you want to take. But yeah, uh, grass, yes, you can use it, but not when it's really wet. In terms of uh, charging, um, I touched on it earlier, but I always try to make my scooter on as high as charge as possible. So um, as I mentioned before, there's three sections. There's a the red, there's a the green and the dark green. I always make sure that as a minimum, my needle is on the border between the normal green and the dark green. And if it's less than that, I always charge it. Uh, not through any manufacturer's guidelines or anything, but I would just do it because that's the way I kind of feel comfortable within myself. And I'm not worrying like, oh God, because the last thing you do when you're going out is, have I got enough charge? Have I got enough charge? Am I gonna run out? You don't really wanna be going into all that. So just make it as easy as possible for yourself. Go into that, as I say, that secondary of green, make sure that's the minimum. Obviously, full charge is the best thing, and that's why I have the in-car charger and things like that, but make it as easy as possible for yourself. You want the whole idea of having the scooter is make, giving you peace of mind, freedom and independence, and if you've got full charge, that makes it a little bit easier. Cleaning your luggy. I suppose your scooter is almost like a pair of shoes, if you like. This is something that has to look nice. You don't want the scooter that's filthy and dirty and loads of dust. I mean, I always try to give it a bit of a clean, like get some baby wipes or something. However, the only thing not to clean is, well, not to clean with any sort of detergent or cleansing liquid is these parts. You know where your foot goes there and there? I mean, these are like grippy, but I've noticed if you wipe them with like a soap or even like a baby, um, a baby wipe, it becomes slippery and your shoes start to slip off it. So yeah, so if you're cleaning it, Yes, clean it down and obviously maintain it. I just use, like say, baby wipes. I'm sure the company will give you some official products you could probably use or not to use, but that's how I've done it. I've used baby wipes, but avoid these two foot patches. Make sure the foot patches are, you can wipe them with water, but not with um, anything, clean, and not, no cleansing liquid, because it makes it slipper. Um, in terms of the folding up the scooter, that is another feature. The great thing about this is it's not just a one way to close it or one way to fold it. You can fold it any way you want, as I mentioned. Even in the state it is now, you don't actually, if you were trying to move it, you could just freewheel it or if someone wanted to move it, they could just lift this, unhook the handbrake and just pull it into the car and then close it down. I mean, I normally, when I, when I close it down, you kind of just close it down and you just put the lever down, lift the lever up, and then just push it straight down. And then I would leave it like that, actually. I would leave it like that, lift this up, put it onto the edge of the car, and um, obviously I'd be up right next to the car, lift it from lift it from behind. So you can imagine the lever at the front of the car, and I just lift this up from behind. And uh, because you've done half the effort anyway, you've lift, you've, you're using a bit of leverage there, so you can do that. Um, what you can also do, you can also do that, have the seat all the way down. So if I was like traveling by taxi or I was abroad on holiday or something, I'd get into the car and then the taxi driver, it's quite easy for him. You've got the handle there, the handle there, lift it up, put it in the back of the car. Um, and once again, in the, situ in the way that it is now, you could lift it up from the front and just pull it along because at the back of it, at the back of it, you have these wheels as well. So you have these wheels like you get on a, um, like you get on a suitcase, so you can just, you can lift it from the front and just wheel it. So it's, it does mean you don't always have to lift it. There's so many different ways to close it, so many different ways to open it. 
it's just a really, really useful. So work out, I mean, that, I suppose the reason I'm saying that as a tip is work out what works for you. There's no official, I mean, there is an official way to do it, but I mean, you may have seen the video, I've seen the one where the person actually closes it down, the, opens the steering wheel tiller and pulls it on like a suitcase. Um, so, I mean, if you're able-bodied enough to do that, yes, that's great as well. But it's whatever works best for you. Don't make everything too difficult um, and don't make anything too hard. Do what works best for you. Um, and the, I mean, like I say, there are, I think the way this has been made, it does give you the option. So it's it's really good like that. So it's, uh, and it's very easy to like open and close. I mean, I'm not really, I'm doing this sat down, but it's uh, it's very easy to do. And the good thing about the scooter is that it does give you a few options to do it. So if with the few options, it does make it easier for you. Another tip I would give is these handlebars or the rubbers on the handlebars. Like so, the handlebars are metal. These are just the rubbers that go on top of it. I've actually noticed there's two types of one. There's one like in this shiny type of material, and there's one like in the rubbery type of material. And I mean, I'm getting down to technicalities there, but it depends. Like if you're someone who wears gloves and the mittens, maybe you wouldn't want these ones, you'd want the rubber ones, but they have these available. So when you take your car, when you take your, car, when you take your lug even for a service, you can just say, oh, can you just change the rubbers? I mean, they have them lying around, so they're not a big deal. But once again, it's a personal preference thing. I, had, I didn't even realize there was a difference until, um, because I, I've got two luggies. So um, there's one I take on holiday and one I keep at home. Um, and I noticed on one of them there was like a rubber one and on one of them there was like this uh, shiny plastic one and it just depends on what works best for you so uh, it's not really a tip but something to bear in mind because at the end of the day this is like your car to a certain degree or it's almost like your pair of shoes it take, takes you where you need to go so make it as comfortable as possible for you so having these tips about um, handles or whatever it might be ends up being very very useful and um, hopefully you can uh, make it work what's best for you okay so there is my hints and tips video i hope you found it very useful um and also remember not quite hints and tips but i just thought there was something useful information that's going to make life with the luggy a bit easier for you and if you're someone who's got a scooter the luggy scooter of course you're already enjoying the benefits and hopefully some of the uh, ideas and tips i've given you today will make your using of the scooter more enjoyable or get more value from it or maybe you'd be like yeah Kaz I already knew them so thanks for sharing anyway but yeah or alternatively if you've not got a luggy scooter and you had a few questions about it hopefully that's answered some of them and uh, like I say we get when, when you use a scooter you get quite technical and a bit quiet um, and you want the detail but it's, it becomes a part of you the scooter it's something that you use all the time and you want to make sure that you're using it to the best of your ability and uh, getting the most getting the most out of it really so and if you've ever got any questions please let me know um if you've got any videos you'd like me to do on the scooter once again please let me know either in the comments or send me a message or whatever is easier but um but yeah uh please do let us know um hope you got as i mentioned i hope you got value from it i hope you enjoyed the video and uh or maybe i'll do one do another video soon thanks for watching cheers